Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black green or Golgari midrange deck built around some of the new synergies, including a free strider, lookout, a three mana, three three with reach, saying whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library, can put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom. This only triggers once each turn. So committing crimes is pretty easy in a midrange deck between discard effects, removal spells, but also cards like demolition field targeting the opponent's lands. A Restless Cottage, once animated, can attack and target a card in the opponent's graveyard, which counts as committing a crime. And of course, the Lookout can help find the Cottage in the first place, so these two have great synergy. And then we have additional ways of targeting cards in the opponent's graveyard, with Graveyard Trespasser, as well as Armored Scrap Gorger, which gives the deck a little bit of mana acceleration, as well as eventually a threat, as well as a bit of graveyard hate, so it does a lot of different work for us. And then by keeping the graveyards clear with Armored Scribe Gorger and Graveyard Trespasser, now we can also count on Axe Bane Ferox to be a lot harder for the opponent to remove, because to target it they need to collect Evidence 4, but if their graveyard is empty then they won't be able to pay that cost, and then now we get a nice 4-4 Death Touch Haste that's harder for the opponent to kill. And then tying everything together, we also have Liliana to make each player discard, which can also fuel our Hostile Investigator. So this can give us a clue token whenever a player discards a card, which also includes channel lands, for instance, since those are also technically discarded. And then when it enters, it makes them discard right away. So it's a nice value engine, especially alongside Liliana of the Veil. And then Liliana using the minus two also counts as committing a crime. And that gives us a bit more removal alongside four copies of Go for the Throat, three copies of cut down and then we've got some more targeted discard with duress which will play well with the investigator and then to help out against go wide decks i'm also playing two copies of harvester of misery which can always be discarded for one on a black to give a creature minus two minus two until end of turn this also doesn't count as technically casting a spell so it makes it easier to transform to night time to get the graveyard glutton instead of having a graveyard trespasser so there's a bit of synergy there and then if we cast it for five mana it can give all creatures minus Minus two, minus two. Now this also includes our own creatures, so we don't want to play too many one or two toughness creatures ourselves, but outside of the caustic bronco we don't have any, and the bronco is still pretty nice here, as we can play it turn two, saddle it turn three with either trespasser or lookout, so we can start damaging the opponent, but even without saddling it, it can still provide a nice bit of card advantage, so it's also good in the grindier matchups. And then, as we mentioned, in the mana base, there's the Cottage, which is also pretty important to eventually close out games. And then the Channel Lands also have great synergy with the Hostile Investigator. And then a couple basics, which we can also search up with our Demolition Field, which is an answer to opposing Utility Lands. And then we also get to play with a new Blooming Marsh to fix our colors early on. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We will need to draw a third and fourth land, but on the draw we can try. Definitely a good hand against aggro with multiple early removal spells. And turn one mountain Swiss spear, so... Safest would be to cut down Swiss spear now so we don't get blown out by a pump spell in response. Yeah, let's just go for it. Even though there are two drops like Felden that might be better targets. Don't want to take any unnecessary risks. Opponent now plotting a Demonic Ruckus. Scrap Gorger's interesting. I think we keep up removal since we know about the Demonic Ruckus. Could have also main phase used the Harvester, but yeah, opponent's just going for it. So now go for the throw at Swiss Spear. They don't get to draw a card of Ruckus. And a Slick Shot's next. Hopefully draw a Swamp here for Liliana. Bronco instead. Alright, let's just use this now before they can Monstrous Rage. And we'll eventually need to draw my lands. Opponent passes. So, if this gets removed, that's acceptable. If not, it unlocks Liliana. Play with Fire Ghost Face. Opponent's got a long way to go without creatures. They are probably not going to get there, and we have a few more creatures covered here. Kumano, we're at 14. And time to play Liliana, I think. While well, the opponent still has cards in hand. Get rid of the instants and sorceries in case they're playing Codebreaker. And leave creatures for Graveyard Trespasser. 
Probably okay to discard another Liliana here. Lightning Strike discarded, so we saved three life already. Well, both decks are stuck on two lanes, so it's only fair, I guess. Opponent now plotting a slick shot. Still have Gopher the Throat to take that out, as well as maybe the uh, Harvester. But uh, yeah, I think I'm down to play Bronco, and then plus Liliana discarding Harvester, keep up Gopher the Throat, and then Scribe Gorger could block Humano as well. Even though there's a chance I could cast Harvester for 5 mana to clear both Slick Shot and Etching of Kumano. Let's just play it safe and go for a sure thing. And then Bronco can pull us ahead with Ferox saddling it potentially. Yeah, the alternative line probably would have involved discarding Bronco with a plan of maybe casting Harvester for 5. But things could get messy if they then have a Monstrous Rage to get their creature to 3 toughness. Okay, Phoenix Chick into Show Off. Phoenix Chick we can also exile with a Scram Gorger, but I don't think it's coming back. So we'll just deal with a slick shot, get rid of an instant or sorcery, make it ancestral anger in case they draw another. Do not touch me. And opponents out of cards for investigator. So maybe go with Axe Bane, saddle Bronco attack, and then I might end up minusing Liliana. But our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keeper. Harvester will be at its best against a tokens strategy, with double Scribe Gorger to ramp it out as well. Although up against the black whites, it could be more controlling in nature. If Scribe Gorger survives, we can maybe play Investigator next turn. Frax in Arena, okay. Opponents ready to draw a lot of cards. Yeah, that could be tough. Still in favor of Investigator, and then next turn Liliana can uh, enable it once again. Although don't expect Investigator to stick around for long. Shieldred at least we can take out with Gopher to throw it pretty easily. Opponent passes. Yeah, can attack with Investigator, or we can play Liliana first, make him discard in case they're holding Wandering Emperor. So we still get a trigger out of it. That seems fine. So I'll just pay the life with Lenor Wastes, since we're probably going to end up doing so anyway, but maybe I'll keep Scram Gorger on defense to protect Liliana. Scram Gorger can go. Get another clue. And then don't mind attacking into Wandering Emperor now. Yep. At least we got our value. Finally, I'm home. And now we can keep up go for the throats and our various clue tokens. Potent will need to find an answer to Liliana. They're just going to make a Samurai for now. Dies to our Harvester of Misery. To me. And Sacro Clue end of turn. Leave creatures in the graveyard for Graveyard Trespasser. But it's just going to play another Emperor on the Scribe Gorger. Now you've done it. That's, cool. That's fine. What you get for hurting my people. Okay, so step one plus Liliana, and then I might be on cut down the token play trespasser. So maybe one go for the throat can go. And I can wait on cut down until they maybe plus Wandering Emperor on the token. If 
Feast of Victorious Dead. Okay, well, I guess that punishes me for waiting on cutdown. And a shield root so we can go for the throats, so that's still fine. Can do so now. Okay, and there's Liliana close to ultimating too. So finish off Wandering Emperor, maybe draw, and then decide what to discard. I can play the Demolition Field, discard Blooming Marsh. They will be able to attack Liliana with their creature land to prevent it from ultimating, but they're not doing much else for the turn, so I think that's acceptable. And I still want to take out their Planeswalker as well. There's still Frex in Arena to worry about, so I wouldn't mind finding my own card draw engine. As Fortress attacks Liliana. They'll switch to Knights, and now Investigator's pretty nice too. So... Play Investigator plus Liliana once again. Opponent only has the one card, but don't have to plus Liliana, I guess, if I don't want to. Get rid of a Sweeper. Glutton attacks. And I think it's still worth it to plus Liliana to threaten ultimate. And now that we see Deadly Cover-Up, I probably want to get rid of their more expensive cards to make it harder to collect evidence. Could also exile my own creatures here. Got one Scrap Gorger left to drain them for one. So now we can block their creature land. The Militia Field can also maybe answer it. But they've got two cards in hand. Uh, their own Liliana. It's gonna mine us. Think we get rid of the Glutton. Keep our blocker for Fortress in case they had an untapped land. And now Archangel Elspeth, another Planeswalker. But yeah, we can ultimate Liliana. And we should be able to make some decent piles. Although, let's uh, think about it, I guess. If I wait on ultimating, what happens? Then they can give a creature flying. So yeah, that's not gonna work out for me. So I have to do it now. And then can maybe split the Planeswalkers. Leave... Maybe token with Elspeth, because if they don't have the token, I can finish off Liliana with an attack. So token, Elspeth are in one pile. Then what else do they get to keep with Elspeth and a token? Probably want to put the enchantment with Liliana. They can keep their creature lands. Some other lands here. And then... Yeah, three lands versus four lands. Where do we put the Phyrexian Arena? Probably with a three land pile, so they can't really leverage the extra cards as much. Yeah, something like this. Well, our opponent didn't instantly decide, so probably means we made a reasonable split. Okay, they're gonna keep their Planeswalker, so we got rid of the Phyrexian Arena. And then maybe start by drawing. Find a Bronco, which I can still play after using Demolition Field. Get rid of the Fortress. Attack Elspeth. Wouldn't be shocked to see a chum block. But they can just keep making uh, tokens turn after turn, so good that we drew an extra threat. Opponent let damage happen. And now wedding announcement's not bad either, so they can keep making more tokens. Opponent's attacking, that's aggressive. I guess they will get another token end of turn. But, uh... Now they might have to trade away the 1-1s 
to uh, trade for Bronco. And we can send both at Elspeth. So they're either double jumping or trading. Found Lookout. Ah, they are trading for the Bronco, but that also deals with Elspeth. So, yeah. I think we're slightly ahead. Although the wedding announcement could still eventually pull them ahead. Opponent gets to surveil. And Ferox can help apply more pressure now too. So we're just gonna turn the team sideways. Opponent's probably gonna trade. Nope, opponent takes it so they can leverage their lifelinker. And a feast. I guess uh, plays well in a tokens deck. Attacking with a lifelinker, even though it would have been a 3-3 lifelink on defense. Draw land. So yeah, let's attack all out. Opponent can double block my 3-3. And then let's see. This is only in their end step. So yeah, that's fine. Keep up the pressure. They're gonna trade for the Ferox. So it takes 7, fall to 4, but they have a 3-3 lifelinker. Probably should play my land out since their opponent's also playing with Liliana. Well, they would probably minus Liliana first. So their opponent is staring down lethal, so they must have top-decked something. March to gain 4, yeah, that'll do it. Grow the token, we draw another land, and yeah, all of a sudden we're pretty far behind. So just... Uh, Couple bad top decks in a row here. May as well attack since I'm not jumping. And another Frex in Arena, right on time. Alright, come on, something. Investigator is a start. Commit a crime, find a cottage. Although I guess we didn't make anyone discard, so we don't get a clue token here. But uh, yeah, we can attack and then maybe hope to trade. If they draw removal, we die. But if they draw removal, I have to chump. I don't think Cottage is going to save me. So I may as well attack. At least one of them is a land. have to trade. Okay, opponent does go back to 13, so this for X and Arena is scary. But uh, yeah, we can start pressuring them with uh, Cottage now. Which also commits a crime with a Lookout. And uh, keep creatures for Trespasser, Exile, I guess something expensive here. Another Cottage would have been great, but I'll uh, Take the land anyways. Points at 8. They might be holding a sweeper, but then we'll still have our creature land, so I'm happy enough playing Scrap Gorger. And then uh, can sag the food to gain 3. So they're now within range of Lookout plus Cottage attacking for 7. Abandon Mire can get back a Planeswalker. Maybe a reason to exile those. But they had multiple. Goes for Liliana. Can sack Scramp Gorger, so... Yeah, we might have gotten there. <sighs> Nobody knows Dominaria shadows like me. Super close game. A Liliana ultimate wasn't even enough to win the game on the spot. I've always hated crowds. I guess her opponent gained one off Feasts, so never mind, they're still in it. But uh, now with Trespasser, we've got one extra damage we need. Yeah, awesome game. Fun to see these mid-range battles. Where it goes to top decks. And our opponent had the upper hand for a while. I guess I accidentally exiled creature with a Scrap Gorger when I meant to exile it with a Trespasser here, but... That does it, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a somewhat slow hand. We'll need to draw a couple more lands. But uh, against aggro with double cut down, we should be fine at least. So we can give it a shot. Turn one mountain. Hopefully no Kumano here. Put on plotting Demonic Ruckus. So we have double cut down at the ready. There's Kumano now. So that was the decision. Okay. Can um, play the lookout. And then next turn Liliana helps us commit a crime. If I play Liliana now, it's probably just going to be attacked by a haste creature. So... I'll go for a lookout and then hope they don't remove it instantly. Because I wouldn't mind getting a couple extra lands out of it. All right, Godric plus Ruckus enable celebration. But that plays into our Liliana minus. And then keep up, cut down. And find a cottage. That's nice. Opponent draws off Ruckus. I'll keep Lookout back to block Kumano. And if they Monstrous Rage, we can cut down. Cut down also commits a crime, so Lookout triggers once again. It's gonna be a code breaker. Now I guess what they can do is use a play with fire to finish off the Lookouts. And then we'll have to be careful with cut down here that we don't get blown out. So etching going after Liliana. So let's say we put lookout in front of etching and they let damage happen. I think that's fine. And then if they go for some instant, I can maybe still cut down. Right, Aligning strike the lookout. That's fine, so then we'll just take out the Codebreaker. And find a forest. So Liliana's still alive. We can cut down Etching. Play Ferox to attack. And plus Liliana discarding a land at this point. Probably could have plussed first to give them a little bit less information to work with. Could also send in Cottage to make a food. But at least uh, if we play Ferox now we don't have to worry about paying for mana later. Don't expect Liliana to survive, but we have another one. That's gonna be a slick shot, we're still at 13. So I don't think we're dead to it. Play with fire Liliana. Whatever. Okay, so we can just minus. Investigators, not bad either. Get their last card. And then we can immediately sack the clue token. And then if our opponent stop decking, it's unlikely that the show off can kill us. Unless they maybe string together ancestral anger. Hit for four. And next turn we're threatening lethal with Restless Cottage as well. So for opponent attacks, they're dead. And we still add a food token to gain life here. And then against Mono Red, if they're playing Codebreaker, it's a good habit to get rid of their instant and sorcery cards. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing green mana. So that's gonna make it hard to keep. This is better. Scrap Gorger into maybe Investigator. Keep Trespasser and probably go for the Throat since it's the least conditional card. And then turn one tapped Glade means I wouldn't be able to play the rest on turn one anyways. Facing turn one Epicure, so likely Boros. The rest could have been decent, but uh, now it's all about ramping out the Investigator. And then go for the Throat is okay in the matchup, but we can't really spot remove our way out of a bunch of tokens. 
Right, opponent's using the blood token, so maybe not the most explosive opening. And I'll just play Trespasser now. And a Warleader's Call, so they've got a pretty slow hand. We'll just cut down the Epicure so Trespasser can gobble it up. And before they could tap it for Convoke, in case they're holding Knight Errant. If they play another Warleader's Call, I'm not going to have any targets for cutdown left. But we can go for the throw at the creature end of turn. Right, opponent may be sitting on the reinforcements, but now it's night time. So, I'll attack, they can double block the Glutton, and then we can take out one of their blockers. Otherwise, Investigator looks good. Maybe an Iganjo? Alright, fair enough. So, funnily enough, Iganjo and Channel Lands also way of triggering the Investigator. Opponent will have to discard another card. But since the Investigator only triggers once each turn, we wouldn't have gotten a second clue token. And Gleeful Demolition discarded, so they must have drawn that maybe after sacking the Blood token. And they could have more of those in hand. So we get a clue. Case also pretty conditional when you're missing the creatures to go with it. So we can still cut down the Inspector, perhaps. And now we've got a bit of pressure with the Investigator. And a Ferox as well. Part of me still wants to cut down the Inspector instead of playing Ferox, but this does put him on a 2 trunk clock. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, go with the aggressive line. And then the Scribe Gorger grows as well. Now the problem is, if they have the reinforcements, they can still double block Ferox. But they didn't play it earlier, so we'll see. Opponent takes 8. And at 19, I don't think they can one-hit KO me from this board state. Opponent making a pair of knights. And a trespasser the draw. So we can double go for the throat, uh, knights and attack, making them jump. Is there a better play available? Could uh, attack with a Scribe Gorger if I just go for the throat, cut down the Inspector, then they get to trade a Knight for Investigator, take 7, fall to 1, and Trespasser's lethal. So I guess that's slightly better here. Leave the creature for Trespasser. Opponents at one. Another recruiter. That's not going to do it here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand may be a little bit too slow on the draw with no one or two mana plays. It is good against a control deck with a Liliana double investigator. So how much do we read into the opponent's sleeve? They might be trying to trick us, honestly. So I'll keep. All right, it was an honest red deck. Turn one Swiss spear, so regretting my keep now. But uh, I've got a lot of two mana plays we can draw. And then we might be alright. Opponent plotting the slick shot. And we drew go for the throat, so that's nice. Opponent now plotting a ruckus and playing another Swiss spear, so they are setting up for a powerful turn. Now sadly they have two creatures, so if I take out one, Liliana still wouldn't be able to get to the slick shot. But uh, we can just play a trespasser now maybe. The rest isn't bad either, maybe good next turn alongside another 3-drop. So yeah, I think Trespasser makes sense. Ok, 
and start gaining a bit of life back. Time for the show off. They're enchanting the Swiss Spear, so it can attack past Trespasser. But it looks like they also have a Lightning Strike. At least now Liliana Minusing looks a bit better, since they have two valuable creatures. And then I can still duress. So maybe a Liliana first. So they have less information on which creature to sacrifice. And if they sack Swiss Spears, they might draw into another non-creature spell. And play with fire. Godric they currently cannot cast. But yeah, shock plus play with fire could have been lethal with a show-off. But we're now plotting another demonic ruckus. And I imagine they finish off Liliana, but we'll see. They could attack face and then shock Liliana. So Investigator makes him discard Godric. And then Ruckus on show off is four damage, so we fall to one. So unless we draw a removal spell, we're dead. And it looks like they found another non-creature spell, Lightning Strike. All right, GG's. Opponent on two lanes here. But uh, yeah, still good enough to cast all their spells. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got some good removal. But we're also prepared to play a grindier game if needed. Opponent on blue red, Bronco, a turn late to the party here, but still happy to play it. Probably won't survive. But next turn we have a few ways of saddling it. And a braid is gonna take care of it. Field of Ruin can hit our creature land. For now, maybe Ferox first for the added pressure. And collect evidence for maybe a little harder for the opponent right now. So they're gonna Field of Ruin, likely to fix their own colors. And they are on Jeskai control, it seems. Ill-timed explosion to wipe the board. Gets around the ward. Now we can resolve Investigator, but yeah, without the creature land, our board looks a little bit worse. Alright, opponent just deciding to draw. Maybe they're sitting on a different sweeper. Still want to play the Investigator here, even though it's likely going to get swept up. At least if it's another ill-timed explosion, we'll get another clue token out of it. Alright, get lost the Ferox. At least it dealt 8 damage this game. And he licks the Investigator. Okay, play another one. Or I can um, draw first with a clue. But if I draw and draw an untapped land, I'll be sad. So we'll do this, and then I can still explore with a map to maybe hit my land drop. Okay, and then explore again. Getting it to 4 Toughness could survive future copies of a Lightning Helix, but draws another land instead. Alright, opponent goes digging. Can maybe exile Deluge with a Scribe Gorger before they can flash it back. Although they can likely play a land and still remove the Investigator here. Yep. Alright, so not getting that plus one counter makes a pretty big difference. But uh, yeah, I guess Crime Gorger just play Harvester as a 5-4. 
And next turn we can maybe start drawing off our clue tokens. And get lost. Okay, so sack a clue. Find a Bronco. Exile Deluge. Can sack another clue. And maybe go exploring here. They might have uh, no more lines in hand, which I could have played around by playing an untapped land. But wanted to get the cottage in play. And then uh, see if this works. Don't need more scrap gorgers. Don't need cut down. All right. We'll see what they've got. Zorgonoja time makes sense. So that will find another answer. And wouldn't be surprised if they pick it back up to keep Hexproof. Got a Reach creature now, and Demolition Field can hit their Cavern of Souls as well, for what it's worth. So play Lookout. Can play the Demolition Field in case I need to use it. But I'll saddle. And attack. Finding a 4 damage Ferox now. Could have also considered attacking with a Cottage, but uh, then we wouldn't have had mana to play anything second main. So now I'm looking at Demolition Fields just so we trigger the Lookout. Targeting a tapped land might have been a mistake since now they can still cast a 4 mana Memory Deluge. But then I guess Scribe Gorger can at least exile it. I guess they could have still technically floated mana if I went after an untapped land and then cast a Deluge. But it uh, would have been less likely since the game may not hold priority. Do we see a different board wipe? Yep, depopulates. So... Exile their most expensive spell for collect evidence purposes, but doesn't seem like it's gonna matter. But we do get to commit another crime here, which does matter. Okay, so play Ferox, attack with Cottage. Take it from there. Looks like they have a counter spell here. Devious cover up. Yep. That's too bad. Still get to put them to six and present another threat. Alright, so if they play Zorgonojutai, they'll need to find a pretty good one here to answer Trespasser. They still need to discard to ward. But uh, yeah, Lightning Helix would do it since they have a card to discard. Opponent leaving Zerg on the battlefield now. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just gotta go for it. And our opponent explodes. All right, super close here against Just Guy Control. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Scram Gorger. Maybe can uh, double spell Duress and Trespasser on turn three. Facing Monored with turn on Kumano. So the Trespasser will come in handy at least. Don't expect them to Lightning Strike Scram Gorger. And then we can maybe take one away with Duress. Scamp also pretty good with the extra counter into a Swiss Spear, which we can block. 
All right, so did not find the land. We'll have a lookout to combo with Scrap Gorger for next turn. So we have a few options, but I'm kind of a fan of Duress and go for the Throat, since now if they remove Scrap Gorger, we're in trouble. And we see Monstrous Rage, Anger, Play with Fire. So can take maybe the Monstrous Rage, since Play with Fire doesn't kill anything. And then we can go for the throat if they try an Ancestral Anger, one of their creatures. Now I guess what they can do is attack and then finish off Scrap Gorger with a play with fire, so maybe that was still a reason to take it. And now they could also finish off the uh, Scrap Gorger with play with fire if they deal too damage with a Cacophony Scamp. But then if we find a third land we'll be in good shape. Because yeah, I guess it could have used Monstrous Rage on the scamp in response to go for the throat to still deal a bunch of extra damage. Opponent goes face and we'll see where they point the play with fire. It's just gonna be another scamp for now. Take four and a land. So I can play a lookout and then Scrap Gorger will trigger the lookout. Could also play the trespasser, exile scamp, gain some life back. And then it's a blocker that's not all that easy for them to get past. And then Scrap Gorger can keep growing in the meantime. Another Swiss Spear. So if I block, let's say, Swiss Spear, they can play with Fire Trespasser, discard their last card, and then trade for it. If they have Monstrous Rage, then we get punished, so it's safer to block Etching of Kumano. And then Scrap Gorger, maybe fine on Swift Spear. And then if I lose it, that's fine. But yeah, looks like they're gonna finish off the Trespasser. Discarding their last card. But we've got another Trespasser coming up. Make sure to use Scrap Gorger here just to get an extra oil counter. Leave the creature for Trespasser. I guess they can finish off Scrap Gorger now with the Scamp. That's acceptable. Opponent actually maybe misclicked and proliferated the oil counter with a scamp when they didn't mean to. And Harvester, we sadly cannot cast for 5 mana yet. So now we're looking at Liliana, Eda Swift Spear versus Trespasser, Exile Scamp. Yeah, I mean the Trespasser is a reasonable blocker here. And then next turn I can play the Lookout, attack with Trespasser to commit a crime, and start ramping. And then I'll exile the Scrap Gorger as well. Find a Cottage. And yeah, we should be able to take over from here. Especially once we cast Harvester for 5 mana to wipe both Swiss Spears. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to build these black-green mid-range decks in standard, whether it's for best of 1 or best of 3. But overall, I've been happy with the Lookout, as well as with the Investigator giving us clue tokens. And then Liliana kind of ties everything together nicely, capable of beating aggro, but can also outgrind some control decks. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.